Today we are going to talk about that how insulin influences fat metabolism. In the previous lectures, we have already discussed what is the role of insulin in the carbohydrate metabolism. Today we are going to start about the fat metabolism. That in the fed state, when you have taken the carbohydrate rich meal, when you have taken carbohydrate rich meal and you are absorbing a lot of glucose, amino acids and other components from dietary system, right? What happens to that glucose and how the glucose which is being absorbed from GIT, how under the directions of insulin eventually it can convert into fat, right? What I'm going to tell you that usually we have a concept that when we take carbohydrate rich meal, when glucose is being absorbed, right, through the portal system, it reaches liver. Almost every doctor knows that under the directions of insulin, tissues will take up more glucose and use that glucose for energy generation. They will use that, tissues will use that glucose for energy generation. Then, if still more glucose is coming, then liver and muscle, they will store the glucose as glycogen. They will store the glucose as glycogen. But very few doctors know that if you have still taken heavy meal and still lot of glucose is coming, right, that extra glucose will eventually by metabolic conversion pathways will be converted into fat. What I really mean that let's suppose you have taken three cups of rice. Is that right? I'm just it's an approximation. Let's suppose you have eaten three cups of rice. Now the glucose which is coming from the first glucose which is coming from the first cup that will be utilized in the body to generate energy. energy. And glucose which is coming from the second cup of rice that will be utilized maybe to synthesize glycogen. glycogen and the if there is still extra glucose coming from the rice right if extra glucose is coming and glycogen stores are full then that extra glucose through the metabolic conversion pathways will be converted into fat, fat. that's what we are going to learn today so today's topic is basically <coughs> role of insulin in lipogenesis Lipogenesis means synthesis of synthesis of specially fatty acids, right? And triglycerides and fat storage, right? Producing the lipids is a different story, and storing the lipid is a different story. For example, lipogenesis, production of fatty acids, and eventually with glycerol converting them into triacyl glycerol. That is the major function in liver. Lipogenesis is mainly going on in liver. liver. But storage is mainly going in adipose Adipo. tissues. Right? Storage of the energy in the form of triacylglycerol is mainly done in adipose tissue. Actually, insulin influences the conversion of glucose, conversion of glucose into free fatty acids and also directs conversion of glucose carbons, carbons present in the glucose under the direction of insulin eventually convert into fatty acids and glycerols then tri triacyl glycerols and eventually they get stored in adipose tissue. So let's start step by step one by one. I say that there are three groups of glucose molecules, right? First group of glucose molecules, first group of glucose molecule when they enter in the body they are there to generate energy second group of yes group of glucose molecules they will be used first pass for energy generation energy generation second is group of glucose molecules are used to produce glycogen and if still more glucose molecules are available and energy need of the body are met with and glycogen stores are full then further glucose the third group of third group of 
glucose molecules, their carbons will be eventually converted into fat, eventually converted into triacyl glycerols, right? Now, we will talk about this group now. There are glucose molecules that are entering into liver and how liver convert them into fats. First of all, entry. Yes. Glucose enters in liver through a special transporters and what are those transporters? GLUT2. Very good. So, glucose will enter here through GLUT2. Glucose molecule, right? And once glucose has entered here, it will be acted upon by enzyme glucokinase. What enzyme will be acting upon? Glucokinase. And this glucokinase enzyme, what it is going to do? It will take the glucose molecule and phosphorylate it. What it will do? It will take the glucose molecule and phosphorylate it. And then glucose molecule which is phosphorylated, that is converted into glucose 6 phosphate. That is converted into glucose 6 phosphate. So, up to now, what we discussed that as glucose is being absorbed after the carbons of glucose are used to produce energy, and after all the carbons of glucose are have been used to synthesize the glycogen, then extra glucose will be converted into fats. How? First of all, the first group of glucose come here, go into glucose 6 phosphate, then it will go to energy pathway. Energy pathway, you know, that is glycolysis. For glycolysis, glucose 6 phosphate will convert into glucose fructose 6 phosphate. Very good. It will convert into fructose 6 phosphate. That will convert into fructose 1 6 bis phosphate. So, what is happening? Glucose is phosphorylated, converted into fructose 6 phosphate, converted into fructose. 1 6 phosphate, then fructose 1 6 phosphate convert into yes, two types of number one is glycerol 3 phosphate, glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate, and dihydroxy acetone phosphate. Right? So it means here glucose came with 6 carbons, here it was glucose 6 carbons, and of course added phosphates, then it convert into fructose 6 phosphate, then one more phosphate, fructose 1 6 this phosphate and then this 6 carbon molecule is divided into 2 molecules, each of the 3 carbon that is glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate and dihydroxy acetone phosphate and they are interconvertible, they are interconvertible right and now this glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate that will go through multiple metabolic conversions and eventually convert into phosphoenol pyruvate. That will convert into phosphoenol pyruvate and this phosphoenol pyruvate will be converted into pyruvate. Now, this is another very important compound. First was the glucose itself. Glucose converted into glucose 6 phosphate. Then through the glycolysis pathway, it converted into pyruvate. How do you define glycolysis? Glycolysis. Anyone? Breakdown of breakdown of one glucose molecule into two pyruvate molecules. Right? Actually, one pyruvate molecule is coming from here. Other this will also re-enter and make two. And all this process is occurring in cytosol. All this process is occurring in cytosol. Now, we have reached up to the generation of pyruvate and this pyruvate will further yes enter into mitochondria, mitochondria. it will enter into mitochondria. mitochondria and in the mitochondria once pyruvate is there this pyruvate will convert into acetyl CoA this is another important compound so what is happening glucose is entering passing through the glycolytic pathway ending up into pyruvates then glycolysis end here this pyruvate will be taken up by 
mitochondria inside the mitochondria pyruvate will be converted into acetyl coa and all of you know then this acetyl coa will pass through the citric acid cycle, cycle and electron transport chain and eventually this will generate the energy this was what was happening to first group of glucose molecule energy generation second group what was happening that when more glucose is coming this some of the more glucose will be converted into glycogen stores right now this is stimulated glycogen no no glycogenesis and this is inhibited pathway for glycogenolysis glycogen right now we have taken about the first group came down produced energy second group went to glycogen storage the real story is what happened the third group if you have eaten too much glucose too much carbohydrates then how it will convert into fat is that right let's deal with it actually what happened the third okay this was the first group i am going to tell you this is the second group now what happens to third group third group of glucose when it enters it will still pass through the same pathway but now metabolic machinery in the liver will convert into triacylglycerol its carbons right it will not take them up because glycogen stores are full usually liver can produce how much uh, glycogen 5 to 6% of its weight the total weight of liver equivalent to 5 to 6% of total weight of the liver glycogen is maximum produced more than that glucose cannot be converted into glycogen that is the moment when glucose will be shuttled or pushed towards lipogenesis is that right now question is that how this will come over here again through the same pathway is that right through the same pathway pyruvate come here and reach and convert into acetyl coa what is new this time new thing at this time is when last group of glucose is passing through glycolytic pathway producing py uh, pyruvate and enter into mitochondria pyruvate and convert into acetyl coa this acetyl coa cannot be used for energy because already there is too much energy this acetyl coa will be used as a raw material to synthesize the fatty acids this acetyl coa right which is available now but energy needs of the cell that fully completely met with then this acetyl coa needs to be converted into fatty acids now how it happens i will make this diagram a little more simple 